Welcome back to Grimsthorpe, which may well be my favourite ground in the country. And I'm here with Ed Solomons, everyone's favourite clay shooting superstar. Oh, shut the front door. You're absolutely ink hauling them. This was supposed to be the last in a series of clay shooting videos. This much? Yeah, absolutely. It's the one thing that confuses the hell out of most people. It was supposed to be on eye dominance myths and whether or not you can shoot to any standard when closing an eye. But nothing being simple in our game, you'll see why this one is out first. I feel betrayed. Watch, learn, enjoy, and subscribe and comment if you feel the need. Eyes are a thing that obviously your the other Ed is an expert. Yeah, the, the clever Ed is definitely the uh, the man to speak to in detail on this, but I've thankfully picked up a little bit by yeah. osmosis from uh, from the main man himself. So yeah, I've got a, a, a passable understanding of the job. We have two eyes. Correct. What should one do with them when shooting? No one's ever going to argue that if you're right-handed, shooting off your right shoulder and you've got a right master eye, that it's not advantageous to shoot both eyes open, okay? that's. Put that out there first, because this is a lot of the stuff that is going to come after this, people are going to pick up on and go, ah, that's not what it is. I would always say, if you can, shooting two eyes open, assuming you've got a right shoulder, right dominant eye, or a left shoulder, left dominant eye. Okay, that's number one. There's an awful lot of however, that's been spouted about, if you shut an eye, you're never going to do any good. Uh, there's no way to shoot a shotgun whilst dimming or squinting or occluding with a patch one of your eyes, which is just straight up, wrong okay? okay so i've got customers who are in double a and triple a class so triple a class in the uk is the top five percent of the of the country's averages okay so you can't fall into it right you've got to have some understanding of what's happening if that's the limiting factor to shutting an eye the vast majority of people who are slagging it off as a concept th that's not even relevant to them you know you measure up into that triple yeah, a class shots the, a lot of this and this is not knocking anyone in particular a lot of this is coming from sort of like club coaches and people who with the best will in the world haven't haven't coached anyone to any sort of particularly high level there's instances where cross eye dominance is less prevalent and less of a problem and shooting two eyes open you can get away with and in a to a degree you can get away with it forever but it's kind of like the equivalent of shooting a scope that's not zeroed in if you shoot it enough you learn on certain shots you've got to shoot off to the left or high or low or whatever you kind of work around it but it's not ideal right there's a lot of people that actually will be better off by understanding their eye dominance problems that they've got and then putting a solution in under certain circumstances. So for example, three of the guys that are in AAA class don't shut an eye or occlude an eye on everything. There's probably a handful of targets that they find are problematic and they bring out an eye dominance issue for them. Okay. So they squint an eye on those birds because we've highlighted what they are and they just look at it and it's another thing like, do I shoot swing through or maintain lead or pull away? They look at it and go, right, I'm eye going shot. to need to shoot this target with pull away and a slight squint on the final fine. movement. Yeah, and, and that's absolutely fine. There are some people who are massively cross eye dominant that won't work for, because when they're working with two eyes open, the off eye, so if you're right-handed, the left eye is doing so much work with two eyes open, by the time they squint it down, the barrel will seem to shift and that yeah. will com confuse the whole job. So they're better off. They're occluding. the people either having a total occlusion or a partial occlusion on their lens. Um, I wouldn't recommend that anyone starts off with an eye completely squinted from the start of the shot because that's firstly muscularly quite tiring and they can start forgetting to do it and all sorts also it does cut down your vision massively if you can get a like a shot spot or similar which is about the size of your that little thumbnail and one of those ones that on. goes over the center of your eye yeah and, and you can get different you mounted. can get separate ones for different strengths so you can get more opaque and less opaque so people who are particularly cross dominant you can have a stronger one and people who've got a, a less strong eye dominance issue you can have a, a sort of a, a thinner one or a, a less opaque one so you can start understanding that there's different levels to this um, what i'd like to do here is show you that actually you are more than capable of shooting targets and squinting an eye not saying it's optimal but it's definitely not going to be a massive limiting factor for you. And this is the myth that's been sort of pushed around by a few people, is that if you, if you have to squint an eye, you're never going to be able to achieve anything. I would comfortably say if you need to squint an eye, you could still get in the England team, and this is for sporting, incidentally. Uh, there may be trap shooters uh, who do it. There's certainly a very good skeet shooter. I think it's Alan Warren's got one eye, so he hasn't really got an option. Uh, works okay for him and his England team and won numerous things. Um, what level do you want to go to? If you're looking to be the absolute best in the world, yeah, maybe you'd look at earlier on changing and swapping off the shoulder. However, most people, their objectives are, I would like to get to A class, I would like to 
improved by 20%, I'd let it get to double A class for argument's sake. Loads of people in double A class and above do so with some degree of cross dominance and some sort of eye occlusion, whether it's squinting or a patch on the glasses. So don't feel that if you're getting pressured in shooting two eyes open and you can't or you don't understand the picture, it's not a massive deal. It's not ideal, but you'll work with it. So we're going to target shoot this set with open eyes, a closed eye, a squinty eye. And yeah, and you, you, you can give me the feedback and you can say, actually, that feels normal, feels really difficult on this target. And you'll find there are certain birds where you maybe click with it a bit better and certain birds where you find it less useful. But to say that you can't do it is wrong. You no. just don't squint at all? No, I don't, but I've got a left master eye um, and don't have any sort of input from my right, so and I don't need to. Just and I'm left handed, just yeah. watch with Ed Solomon's. So um, but, you know, that's, that's me. And there's also people who are, for example, right-shouldered, right-eye dominant, and they can't shoot two eyes open because they find the picture of two barrels in their peripheral vision confusing. Unnerving. Yeah, which is fine. So if making, if squinting an eye gets rid of one of those pictures for you and it makes you accept it better, great, problem solved. Talk about little hacks seems to be the, the sort of message of the day. Little work hacks out, to get yourself the extra targets. Work out what works for you. Okay. So both eyes wide open to start with, yeah? This is what you'd normally do, right? So you'd shoot two know. eyes. I don't know. Okay, well. I, for I feel sake, like I feather my left eye slightly, but I don't know. Try and shoot two eyes open on both, both targets. Eyes. Do a couple of pairs, if it helps you just get into the swing of it, and let's take it from there. So we're going to go through, once you've done this, we're going to go through a couple of the options that you'll find to see how it affects your shooting. Probably very stupid, but yeah, never, don't actively like stare with both eyes open. Okay, so we're about to. go in your own time, both eyes open. In your own time, both eyes open. Cut. Well. Cool, okay felt normal. I felt perfectly normal. It's, it's, a, it's a different thing on that going away target. I think my, my natural thing would be to get in, just close an eye and then just okay, line fine. up for it. So you, you're someone who's already found out, albeit by accident, that you, you do to an extent dim an eye on certain shots. It's yeah, just been it. not yeah. without, without realizing it. Okay. Cool. Cool. So now you've shot your pair, both eyes open. Uh, I missed that going away. Yeah. Um, which was not my usual form of going away. No, nope, fine, you'll say nothing. Um, I'd like you to do the same setup, but just ever so slightly squint your eye it's on both better. targets. Yeah, just, just dim it down a little bit. So don't shut it off. Just And if you want to start both eyes open and squint down, probably not going to have the time to do that on the trap bird. I would say that's going to be something lock in, semi squint, and then call pull. What you're easy with on the second one. Pull. Absolutely crushed that pair. Out of interest, did that feel noticeably harder, less comfortable? I felt significantly better, to be honest. Okay. On that pair. So just by, for you, for just slightly squinting down, that actually improved the shot for you? Yeah, I don't know, a pair like this, it feels to me like there's a very mechanical movement needed. For yeah, this pair. so straight at it, point yeah, straight and Straight at it, good power, good reading of the line. Mm -hmm. And with both eyes, I've really struggled to okay. well, get that, the gun versus the target we've, line. We've accidentally stumbled on something that maybe is going to help you further on. Okay. Um, do you want to shoot now a pair out of interest? Oh, completely squint, squint down your left eye. So from the start of the shot, left eye is off. Don't bother opening it up for the second one. Just, just keep it closed. Keep it shut so that the maximum amount of handicap, if you like. Yeah, the industrial accident has happened yeah, to my see, eye. Yeah, I've gouged minutes. it out with a melon ball and let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, okay. So full, full closure. Full closure of the left eye, okay. First thing, the image becomes very... Um, and you're gonna go there, that's, that's gonna be a better line. <laughs> very 2D. Pull. Automatically shuts off my instinctive shooting mm -hmm. automatically feels like if this, the feathering felt mechanical, that mm -hmm. felt robotic in okay. terms of I must do this, there's my sight picture, there's the gun, there's the target movement. Okay. Which isn't a bad thing necessarily given my your proclivity to, to wang through stuff. Guns around like an absolute do, just do two or three more pairs for me and completely shut that left eye off. You know, everything we've been talking about, about trying to get that better connection visually between the gun, your eye, and the bird. Just see if that. Makes it. it easier. Okay. Oh.
hilariously, this is the best you've been moving the gun all day. <laughs> it feels, for sporting, this is the right thing for me. Maybe yeah, I mean, all, all the stuff we've been trying to get you to do about getting better connection and slowing the move slowing down and seeing down. the picture opening up, it looks like it's actually helping you. So we've almost, by doing a, 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 a sort of a, a, a little, little feature video. on this, a um, bit of food for thought for you here, possibly. Uh, it would be more interesting pair. to perhaps go and shoot a different stand in a second. Yeah, well, that's to... exactly what we're going to do. One more pair, I'm going to go and shoot a, a stand from scratch. We'll see how you feel. An interesting one, as we played around with it earlier on, getting you to connect and slow down, which as a concept you understood, but you struggled to apply Consistently. comfortably. Should we go back to that and now just find out what happens if you dim down your left eye as you shoot? Whether that has the same effect there as feeling you've got a better connection and making the shot Calming feel slow. down and actually yeah. say stretching gaps out as opposed to... Yep. Yeah. See what happens? Very much so. Thank you. There you go. Okay, Johnny Fart Pants. All right, big boy. Let's see whether... Let's just go straight into this. The removal of my second eye actually makes me less... So I'm not going to suggest that you, you go complete eye off. Okay. Let's just do the whole squinting it down. See what happens. Yeah. So we're going to shoot this as the report pair. Perfect. Going away, trappy kind of bird, which I can only think squinting eye will help you on yeah. because it's very much point and shoot two thirds back, connect, and a lovely slow stretch into probably a foot or so on the second bird. Yeah, the removal of my ball catching two eye thing actually makes this so methodical you're, this, this is not a This is not a setup or a wind up, incidentally. You're generally saying this actually makes a lot of the pictures clearer for you and makes the moves make more makes sense. Makes the moves way more calculated. And okay. in a sporting scenario, yep. you know, I think if I was pigeon shooting, I'd probably still shoot two eyes open for the ability to read line, bigger yep. picture. But in this scenario where we can see the target and see everything, and I know know the method. Yep. Do you find it easier to apply? Yes. Okay. Removes Fine. some noise from Let's go. the conversation. Do another pair for me. Pull. Oh, shut the front door. You're absolutely ink balling them, everyone. Pull. Johnny's going to be gouging his eye out with a spatula when we get home. You, I mean, we can go and shoot another stand, mate. <laughs> I know you're enjoying yourself, but... Um, big blood, mate, I've always struggled with sporting. That repetitive nature doesn't suit mm. me and my style, if there was one. S such as it is. Yeah, because I just can't help but want to do different things every damn mm. time. Drive the gun like a moron. Those, those last 12 targets, or whatever it is you've just shot there, have, have been, as far as I'm concerned, flawless in how you've applied your shot. Let's go and shoot some more stands. Yeah, this is, could be one of those, because the world, a bit like that maintained lead thing I said, you know, no one shoots maintained lead. You shot maintained lead for ages, and I'm pretty sure back 10 years ago when I was shooting as a, a younger person, I used to feather an eye a lot, but mm. everyone goes, no, you never can't really do that. Like that. Yeah. And you have the propensity to listen to people who are better than you, even yep. if they know Ooh. all. Mm. going differently to how I thought this video would go. Yeah, this is an interesting, unexpected turn of events, but whilst it's happening, I think we should roll with it. So what we're going to do is just do three completely fresh stands that you've not seen or shot today. I'm going to let you run with the shots you think I would tell you to do mm -hmm. based off what we've done so far. The only change is going to be just squint your left eye down, see how it goes. So far, you look infinitely steadier and better connected to the clays than you have done with two. Um, let's see if it continues. There may be stands where it catches you out, fine. But that's part of the learning experience. Understand the sort of targets that they are, learn from it and go, right, there's a category of birds where dimming an eye helps, there's a category of birds where opening both eyes helps more. I have my theories, but I'm looking forward to finding out how this goes. Let's roll. Okay. That's so. You can have a quarter inch Shondell yep. that comes up from this trap high, getting up and away from you. Mm -hmm. On report, a steady floaty crosser that comes off that scaffolding, left, right, over there. That's another bird where I think the connect and controlled move away is very much the shot. Mm -hmm. 
first one, fairly short, punchy move. Punch have, a look, have a look at the targets and then okay. make your shot choice, but dim the eye. You'll never hit anything squinting an eye. Uh, oh God, you're what just eyes guessing. Are terrible. I set you off camera. I feel betrayed by popularist. I feel betrayed that I threw any of the things that I thought were right originally because they worked for me in the bin and started doing all the things that have maybe made me a more rounded shot for understanding them. Mm. I used to squint an eye as a kid and everyone said, no, 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 clearly. Have you, have you missed a target yet, Johnny? Not yet. Poke Johnny's eye out with a melon baller now. Interesting question for you to answer honestly now, and this is another one where it will feed back to some of the stuff you may or may not have heard as truths previously. With you dimming your eye, would you say you're more or less aware of the barrel now? Um, more. Yeah, okay. More. Which, if you were to listen to lots of people is definitely a bad thing, right? Terrible. Have you missed anything yet? No. So, you're not looking at the gun, but you're aware of the gun. Oh, acutely. Now you're more aware of where the gun is, you can now get a better connection and understand how the gun interacts with the target. Yeah. Agreed? Yeah, yeah there's definitely so a better connection. So you get the difference between, right, like, easier to now insert to the bird, out the back of the bird, connect for longer, connect for shorter, and have a longer shot. You can just see how the whole thing's playing out better because you're more aware of the two points of the shot, which is the gun yep. and the clay. And there's a lot less flexibility, which is good realistically because you don't need to be too flexible. It's you, know, you know what you're doing, you know what you've got to do, you know what you've got to get to. So, so in a way, you've, you've busted a couple of Ooh. myths there about this whole, you need to ignore a gun where you can't because that's in front of your face, so yeah. you're going to see it. Yeah, you know, I'm not staring not, at it. Not saying you're looking it's at it. It's a sight picture, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I wouldn't but say the... that you want to look at it, yeah. but you're going to be aware of it. Okay. And you're now, by dimming your eye off, you're actually more at, you're easier it. to get the connection between the, where the gun is, where the clay is, and make the correct movement, rather than just getting reliant on gun speed and timing, which has sort of historically been your issue, if you like. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. There's two or three of the old myths busted. Yeah, like, off yeah the bat. not even like in a. Oh, look at us, way, aren't we clever? No, like no, in just, a genuine A, this oh is, wow, this is, this how, is a game changing. Watching, watching people shoot and understanding what's happening and trying stuff out, you go, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, and you have to try things that, that are new sometimes too. I'm sure incidentally there'll be some targets where you find it's less easy. Yeah. And I'm, that's fine. I'm going to be interested on this, this big the, one we shot earlier. The one that I think is going to be absolutely night and day for you is the rabbit, because you really struggled to, to not have a connection. Through that. Yeah, which mm. is fine with two eyes, I think this might just make it infinitely easier for you. You might be wrong. The big crosser that comes with it, undecided. You, I'm looking forward to shooting Yeah, you'll see, see, what we'll see what happens. But you may, you may come off that saying, it's off that side of your left-hand side, so for a right-hander, eyes are away from the gun. You're not having to look across the barrel. You've got a fairly clear yeah, picture yeah. of it. You might be fine. You may find that squinting your eye on that target takes away from the shot, in which case, don't do it. Yeah. But so far, you've looked infinitely more settled and you're making the same moves every that, time. That's the thing that I think is, it, it removes everything. I've got that. Yeah. Yeah, I've got that. The rest of the world doesn't matter. It's me on the target and I obviously suffer from clay HD because you start, you start looking at other things. Mm. You start taking in stuff that doesn't matter when actually all that matters is you, the target and this movement. Or this movement in a second, hopefully. Yeah. Cool, well that's a, that's a nice, Nice thing to hear and interesting to see, and we'll be to see what happens on the next one. Let's find out. You look different with one eye. Yeah, just squint down, and again, the rabbit really make a point of not pushing past. Move to it, don't move past it. Just, it will be interesting to see straight off, knowing the problems that you have with this quartering rabbit earlier on how this changes, because this is one of the ones we mentioned earlier. If people did have a problem with their eyes, this is where it would be shown up. Just look at the back edge. I know you're still on one eye. Just look at the back edge of the rabbit for me. It's getting a bit dark. Can you... Yep. Perfectly safe to take these off right now. Disclaimer. Look at the back edge of the rabbit for me.
I think I'm just shooting that. Can I just have a few of those rabbits? I yeah. think I'm just stuck on my previous. Yeah, you're shooting to exactly the same place. Yeah. Mick, keep your eyes squinted. Risk, keep the same timing. Miss one off the back edge. Okay, if you miss it three or four inches behind, see what happens. It's your gun speed that's taking you past it. Just understanding that the bird, as it's coming into your kill zone, is slowing down dramatically. Yeah. You've obviously got a bit of gun speed built in. By the time you're telling your brain to pull the trigger on the backside, it's got to the front side and it's sent it. One of those places that perhaps too slow and smooth. Yeah. Smooth, but with a little bit of speed. And understand that you need to actively look into the back of this target. Even with dimming your eye down, your gun speed is still taking you on that. It's only three or four inches, but it's far enough to make you miss in front or not. So keep it the same for me. Two more rabbits. Moving into the back side of the target, dim the left eye down. Very different on a rabbit to a bird in the sky, stupidly. Yeah. For your own experimentation's sake, don't shoot any faster, miss one behind. Because you're, you're still, your brain's clearly wanting to go out to a space it doesn't need to. If it means missing three behind, don't shoot it faster. Same move, change your picture. Best two you've had. So understand how, like we said earlier on, your gun speed is building lead into the shot that you're not visually aware of. And that target is actually unbelievably slow. It's doing nothing. If, yeah. that, if that was in the air, it couldn't be in the air because it wouldn't be able to keep itself up. Yeah. Go again. Just because you see it coming so quickly, you can't help it. Yeah. So as somebody who doesn't need to squint an eye, I'm just gonna shoot a couple of pairs now as an experiment because I've played around with it in the past for trying to help people out, but it's not something I would do out of choice. Um, be interesting to see. Everything looks a lot further away. That it does. Yeah. That, especially that midi, that midi looks like a pin prick. It's actually surprising, once you get your head into it, it's surprisingly easy to do. Um, it doesn't feel natural, but no. it's actually not as it's not as hard as it's I thought. It's not as hard as I thought I would find it. Well, I feel that's going to really cock up my shooting for a short period of time. I don't think it will, personally. Okay. I actually think because instantly you've looked better. So everything I, I know should just fall into place better. I think you've, the, the shots and stuff we've been working on, you seem to have been able to apply them a lot better now that you've got a better understanding of where the gun is. Um, and you've been able to do the same thing 10 times in a row, which is a novelty for you. Well, that, so. that is, yeah, that seems yeah. to be the thing. It's the ability to, even that rabbit, although I was missing it, like so towards the end, hitting it every time you go, yeah, I can actually do this again. Yeah, you, under, you understand where you've been and how you got yeah. there. Cool. My sight picture and understanding of barrel speed and gun speed is feeling, feels a lot better. So we've, we've kind of stumbled on this by accident because this was just meant to be a, oh, look, you can shoot stuff squinting an eye, it's not impossible. You've actually found it to be a lot easier for you, which is great, and it kind of, it kind of backs up what we were saying earlier on about there is not this black and white, if you shot an eye, you're doomed to, you know, failure. Yeah, to be, yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, and you've, you've applied it really, really well there, so well done. Awkward fish bump. I also said fish bump there. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah, sure, awkward yeah, fish yeah. bump. Can we just touch penis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can touch mine later. Thanks. You can find it. So there you go. I was a fool. I was told by people that I trusted that if I only opened both eyes and shot with more gun speed, I would improve. I would break my ceilings and smash through barriers. Uh, this was some years ago, and maybe it has helped with my game shooting. But my ability to be consistent on sporting is virtually non-existent. As I said on the day, Having both eyes open, to me, in hindsight, feels like it's giving my brain too much information. Standing there, calling pull, the clay the HD is present, and when I see the clay, a sudden urge to shoot it like an utter calamari sets in. I can't wait to get out to the ground and shoot over a round of 100 and see what difference it makes. The moral of the story is that shooting is not black and white. Get an instructor who understands that. Do not listen to bull artists. Because once you've listened to them, it's really hard to forget what they said. And finally, my thanks go to Grimstorpe Shooting Ground and of course, Ed Solomons. He's one of a small handful of people that understand 
completely all of the nuances of clay and game shooting. And more importantly, he's a pleasure to be around. Mate, thank you very much. And of course, thank you for watching. Take care, guys. We'll see you soon.